What's going on guys? Welcome back to the shop. Welcome back to episode two of our SEMA build series. So as you guys can see, we have our M4 behind us. The car is completely taken apart. The reason for that is this kit comes with a lot of replacement parts, meaning that we literally have to take off our stock fenders, for example, and put the new ones on. So typically on some wide body kits, you have to do a lot of trimming and cutting when it comes to the rear and the front. But for this kit, the front one is a full replacement. The only area that we need to trim and cut and mold on is going to be in the rear. So hopefully by the end of this video, guys, we have everything fully test fitted because that's our main goal. We want to get everything test fitted before we send our car off to the body shop so they can mold those rear pieces in it. And then we can get on with wrapping and everything else that we still need to do. So yeah, guys, hopefully this doesn't take too long. It might be a long process, but see my crunch time. That's what it's all about. So yeah, guys, let's check out the kit and we'll see you in a bit. So yeah guys, like we mentioned, before we actually install the kit, we have to draw a lot of holes. As you can see, there's already indentations right here on the side skirts. We actually already started drilling them. So we have one, two, three, four, five. We have five top holes on each side skirt that we had to do. And then there's a bunch in the bottom as well. So luckily on most of the kit, there's a lot of holes that are already drilled out, but there's a lot of indents that need to be drilled out. And there's a lot of things that need to be trimmed and cut as well. So it can line up perfectly on the car. So before we actually test fit it, unfortunately we got to do all that. So that's basically what we're going to do right now so we can get this test fitted done as soon as possible. So as you guys just saw, we just finished trimming and drilling out all the holes for the side skirts. We moved on to the fenders. The fenders were very tedious. There was tons of holes and tons of little dots that needed to be trimmed off. It took a while, but we got it done. We were finally moving on to the next piece, which will be the trunk. So as you can see on the trunk, there's the same thing. A lot of indentation that needs to be drilled out. Uh, for those of you who kind of don't know what we're talking about, I'll show you guys right here. On the stock hood, you can see it comes pre-drilled -drill, pre out with all these holes. So if we go to this one, it doesn't happen. So just indentations. So yeah, we got to drill all these out to match up with this one. So when we put the carpet back in here, everything sticks to place and it won't fall out. All right guys, so we ran into a slight bit of an issue as we were drilling out the trunk holes and everything, getting everything dialed in and perfect. We noticed something very drastic and very different on the trunk. This trunk right here has no opening for the emblem. So I was thinking maybe we don't need the emblem, but the actual reverse camera is in the emblem. So we do need it. So if you guys see right here on the stock trunk, there's a huge indent where basically this would go in, it would line up with bolts in and stuff like that. So now what we're gonna have to do is basically do our best to get these measurements on the stock trunk and throw them on here. But another thing that we also notice is that this trunk has like a, a bit more of a kick up. I'm not too sure if the camera can pick it up. Maybe you guys can see it, but it's, it's pretty noticeable and it's almost like a CSL style trunk where this is just flat. So the issue with that is, well, actually that one looks a lot cooler in my personal opinion, but the issue with that is that, um, this surface is more flat where this almost has like a wrap surface. So what I mean by wrap surface is kind of slants down like a half pipe. So it won't allow this to sit fully flush. So what I'm thinking, we're going to try to get the measurements as best as we can on here, mock up them, walk them up on here. And if this doesn't sit flush, we're going to put probably like a washer or something because we definitely need this. If this didn't have the camera in here and it was like located 
knocked out here by the license plate or something, I'd probably say, let's just do no emblem, but unfortunately we can't do that. So yeah guys, little hiccups that we're running into, but we're gonna get to them and get through this. All right guys, so we just finished up. We just test fitted the full kit. As you guys can see by the front end, this kit is absolutely aggressive. We cannot wait to see the finished product guys. But the next step is going to be to send this kit off to the body shop so they can do some molding with the rears like we're saying earlier in the video. But guys, stay tuned to the next video because we're gonna be showing you which color we ended up going with the UPPF. You don't wanna miss it. See you guys on the next one.